I'm General Jack Keane, the Vice Chief of Staff of the Army. I'm standing in today for my boss, General Eric Shinseki, the Chief of Staff. General Eisenhower's D-Day order, dated 6 June 1944. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark on the Great Crusade, toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940 and 41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously degraded their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. General Dwight D. Eisenhower. My name is Thomas J. Ruggiero. I was with D Company of the 2nd Ranger Battalion, which was headed in to Point de Hoc. I am proud to read for Bill Reed of the 5th Ranger Battalion. Omaha. When we exited the landing craft, many people had flotation belts. If the water was over your neck, you would turn upside down. When we got off the boat and into the wet sand, we had run in for the seawall. Men were dying around us, lying in different positions. The tanks were burning. Finally, we got behind the seawall on the beach. At this time, General Carter, who is the assistant division commander of the 29th Infantry Division, made the statement, Rangers, lead the way. Or Rangers, let's get moving. To us it meant, let's get moving. Dog White. I'm reading for Sergeant William B. Hodlowski, C Company, 116th Reg Infantry Regiment, the 29th Division. My name is Edward B. Farley. My company was the 463rd Amphibious Truck Company that landed on, D on Omaha Beach June the 7th, 1944. We left England with ducks. They were amphibious trucks which carried the 105 millimeter cannons, 90 rounds of ammunition, and 10 men with full battle equipment. These ducks didn't prove very good in rough water because I think we lost every one before we got to the beach. When I got my men on the duck and tried to get off the ramp, the rough water put us on the upside and we were almost off the ramp. And it hit our rudder and bent it. So while the other ducks are lined up heading for the beach, we were in the water going around in little circles. 
and cannot straighten out, cannot go anywhere, just drifting further and further away from the ships into the deeper water. The coxswain running the thing decided to shut off the motor, which was a mistake. Because when you shut off the engine, you shut off the pumps, and it started to fill with water. And what happened, we sank. I am Frank Johnson of the 1st Infantry Division, the 18th Infantry, and I'm speaking for Captain George Mayberry of the 4th Infantry Division. Heavy mortar shells commenced exploding from the beach, as well as sporadic mortar fire from a short distance inland. A soldier just ahead of me was blown to pieces by a direct hit. The instant it happened, something small hit me in the stomach. It was the man's thumb. About then, General Theodore Roosevelt, Jr. came striding along the beach. He was waving his cane and bellowing at everybody as usual to get moving across the dunes. He, we kept moving as fast as possible. Some enemy riflemen began firing at me, so I began to run forward toward the top of the dunes. Facing me were five of the enemy. I shot the one with his hand raised to hurl a grenade. The rest threw down their rifles and put up their hands. I hand them over to a wounded corporal and went forward again. Thank you. I am A.S. Hydrick, I landed as a lieutenant with a 746 tank battalion attached to the 4th Infantry Division. I will be speaking for Major John A. Hearn, C Company, 70th Tank Battalion. <clears throat> I heard cries for help, and looking toward the beach, I saw three figures who I surmised were injured paratroopers. I immediately returned to the tank and got the first aid kit and tried to cross the hedgerows to get as close to them as I could. I was going through a break in the hedgerow when a personnel mine went off under me. The explosion threw me over the hedgerow and I was unconscious for a while. Subsequently, I awakened and heard two of my crew yelling for me. It was hard to find me because I had rolled up against the emb embankment. But when they did, I cautioned them not to come, but to hand me a line as of a mine's present. They went back to the tank and got a long rope to throw the rope to me and then drag me out of the hedgerows. My memory is a little fuzzy. How I got back to the field hospital. In the early evening of this makeshift tent, I was operated on. They would re remove a foot because they felt I would not be able to stand both operations. So one foot was amputated, and I was prepared for transport back to England. My name is Len Lomel, Company D, 2nd Ranger Battalion. I represent and speak for Lieutenant Sid Salomon of C Company of said battalion. This is what Sid wrote with regard to his experience at Omaha Beach on D-Day. When I jumped off the landing craft, I held my Tommy gun over my head. I jumped into not quite chest high water. And it took a few seconds to get my feet on the ground. A mortar shell landed right behind me and killed or wounded all of my mortar section. I got some of the shrapnel. It hit me in my back. I landed right on my face. I fell down in the sand and I thought I was dead. I reached into the pocket of my field jacket looking for my maps. I asked one of my men who was next to me if I, if I was hit. He said yes. So I said, you've got to take my maps. In that instance, the sand was being kicked up in my face by a machine gun. Right then and there, I said to myself, that I wasn't going to die. This was no place to be lying around. 
So I looked and took my maps. I got up and I ran toward the overhang of the cliffs. These are the cliffs of Point de la Perse. These were the days before penicillin, and each man carried a sulfur pack, and they put it on my back. That's all I can do for you now, he said. And I said, take care of the rest of the guys. I'll start climbing up the cliffs.